So you're going to land on your feet, whether it's today, tomorrow, or two months from now, or if it's not two months from now, you'll take a holding pattern job yeah. until maybe your family in-laws can get you somewhere. You know, I, is what I'm putting together from everything you told me. Right. And we're, you know, we're kind of starting hot here, but like, even still, you know, uh, where April works, the shoe store, mm-hmm. they do these truck jobs where, you know, instead of you sending all of your employees here to get your work boots, yep, they send a truck to the job site and you just go out and do the thing. Mm-hmm. If, you know, they end up having a bunch of truck jobs between now and whenever. You'll take a few. I'll take a few. You know, oh, when yes, we had talked about this a year ago. I remember you, you saying looked, something about a truck, about the truck jobs with April, but go ahead. Yeah. So when we, when this came up, they're like, oh, it could be a year from now that we're done. And it ended up being slightly less than a year. <laughs> um, we had joked that I'll, I'll go work for April, whether it be in the store or on the truck or whatever it is and drive her nuts her entire life, you know? Right. You, she, you'll work under her. Got it. <laughs> wink, wink. Exactly. Anyway, that's that's good. And unless there's any more information, because I'm kind of I don't know what else. <laughs> right. So I, I just I just bored Todd with an off mic, which is not what I wanted to do. Uh-huh. I don't want to bore Todd again with it because there has been some updates. If you listen to ad odds this week, you heard me go through everything that happened with me losing my job. I'm not going to rehash the whole thing again, again to Todd. So what I'm going to do is tell you to go listen to Ad Odds from this past week. If you don't want to listen to Ad Odds from this past week, I'm just going to drop that 15-minute segment in right here. Well, I'll I'll uh, do my best to uh, you know speed through the opening banter section here. <laughs> yeah, Joe, uh, do, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> Let me play it. <laughs> Yeah, this isn't this isn't the main show, but what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> I forgot the guys part. My bad. <laughs> it's all right. So, um, yeah, um, I got let go from my job this week. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I saw you put that in the discord. Uh, I don't know how much you want to talk about, but, uh, you know, what happened? Uh, I'm still going to protect the integrity of the super secret science. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, cause you know, obviously it's one of those things where like, ah, I'm going to go on there. Like, I'm not going to like blast them, but I'm going to like say like, Oh, this is what I was doing. But again, if you listen, you pay attention, you probably know what I do, but I still like to say super secret science. And, um, it's one of those things that's been kind of hanging over the company's collective head for like the better part of the last, like 12 years. Um, like 12 years ago, we were told that we were in runoff, um, that we weren't taking on any new clients. And that once our existing book of business was done, we'd all be done. People were upset. People were this. People, how could they they do this to us? So on and so forth. And, you know, when they'd bitch about it to me, I would say, well, you know, if you feel it's unfair, you know, go out there on the open market and see what that's going to bring you for your job skills. And, you know, I think for what we do and what we get paid, I think we're doing okay, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, that would have been, like, October-ish, like, 12 years ago, like, right around this time. And then, like, January, February of the next year came in, and because, like, so little focus was going into, like, new acquisitions for us, we became, like, super profitable and kept, like, the entire company afloat for that last quarter of mm-hmm. 2012 or whatever it was. So that bought us a ton more time. And then with just the way that, you know, over the last four years, the way that this sort of business is um you know they had been trying to consolidate and i'm using all the buzzwords that i would use to people when they would call so yeah (laughs) um because it was essentially an inbound call center but it was you know essentially customer service but again i'm even saying too much right sure so we were trying to reduce our footprint you know we were trying to look at like places where we had like 10 or 12 clients and it was costing us X amount of money to be in those those states. So it's like, okay, well, it's not cost effective for us to pay for all of these things and only have 10 people in the entire state or 12 people in the entire state. So that was like the first thing to go. Then there were other states where like, okay, once we get below this number of clients, we could start to withdraw from that state. And we did that. And then it just got worse, right? Um, so then about a year ago, the decision was made to 
shut off the part that we were in, right? Mm-hmm. Now, and again, I, I, I'm going to speak in vagaries here. Um, they offered training for one of the new products, and the new product was a very substandard product. It was a very um, product that was less about service and more so about get them in, get their money, and get them out. Okay. As I'm speaking in vagaries, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I learned that. I knew that. And they were offering positions there. But then as, as I was looking at positions there, it was – you had to have more flexibility. Like you had to be able to like change your hours at a moment's notice. Um, and it was for less money. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I know it. So at least that'll help me stick around a little bit longer. Right. And the last like two weeks, it's just gotten like way busier. And I'm like, did they let people go? What's going on? Like, why are we so jammed up? And then Wednesday they put a thing in our schedule that said, you know, group meeting or team meeting or whatever it was. And I'm like, that's it. I go, they're letting us go. And, you know, then there's like people in the inner office communicate like, oh, I thought yesterday they said that all meetings this week were canceled because we're so busy. And they're like, well, this isn't a meeting. There's something different. Uh, OK, I go, OK, now this is, you know, this is what it, this is what it is. Right. Mm-hmm. So, listen, I, I got no problem to say I do a lot of stuff on my work computer and I start like file transferring stuff. And it wasn't anything major. It was like the notes for this show, the notes for Longbox Heroes, um, you know, my comic book stuff, you know, even though I have it in like triplicate, like that's the main list <laughs> that's there. Yeah. So all that stuff, I'm just moving over to the computer that's literally right next to me. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they get us in and they tell us and they say, OK, we're eliminating your guys positions. Um, enough people. And I later found out it was three people, three people. Um, that also took that class that I took a year ago for the other product, the substandard product that went over to that substandard product and still know the existing product that we do. They feel that those three people will be enough to handle whatever is going to come from here on out until that book of business is done. That book of business ain't done for another year plus, right? Mm -hmm. But they are actively trying to push people away and like not be with that product anymore. Um, and it's like, not in a way of like, oh, well, we have this other substandard product. You could try that. It's more or less by, I don't want to say directively giving them poor service, but I just did. (laughs) So all the work stuff out of the way, um, it's fucked up. Yeah. Um, I've been at that job for 24 years. I've been at that job over half my life. And now I have to go and like, find a new job. And I don't know how to do that because I haven't had to do that. The last time that I had to do that, I typed up a resume that included my high school because I was four years out of high school, five years out of high school, whatever it was, the little bit of college that I had done, which was only like, like five credits short of like an associate's degree. But like that was 21 years ago or 20 years ago, whatever the fuck it was. Right. Yeah, it had your after-school activities on the resume. Right. <laughs> you, know? you know, I was in the drama club and all that sort of shit, right? And, like, I did it in Word, and I printed out a copy, and I handed it to a person, right? hmm And <laughs> it's just, um, you know, it's, it, I, like, I'm, deal- I'm not trying to take it all on at once. I'm trying to take a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, the good part about it is, you know, they paid us for the rest of the day on Wednesday when they let us go to like 11 o'clock and they're paying us out for the rest of the month up until the first of November. Like I get, I get paid bi-weekly. So like this week I'm finishing up and I'm getting that check. And then the next two weeks they're paying us out on that. I'm also getting a severance and the severance is approximately four months of my normal salary. Okay. And then they're paying me off on whatever PTO that I had left over, which is quite a bit. But when I say quite a bit, that's like, uh, if I do my Gazintas, that's like another like month, maybe. Mm -hmm. But that PTO gets paid out on my check in two weeks. And then the severance gets paid out 
like 45 days after November 1st or whatever it is, right? Um, and then, like, luckily, about a year or so ago, we changed my insurance over to my wife, except for our vision and our dental. So I have to, like, look into that. Um, I have a 401k for being with the company for 24 years. Um, I have a pension. I have all these other things. But I'm in this weird limbo with all that sort of stuff. And this is hot, you know, old man job talk to start the show to <laughs> let Adam watch the rest of his game. But the thing <laughs> is, even though I'm without a job, because I'm not, I'm technically not without a job until November 1st. So I I already called all of those things and I can't start the ball moving on the replacement insurance, the 401k, the retirement, any of that other stuff until after November 1st when I'm technically no longer with the company. Now, granted, yeah. they've shut off all the contacts. I can't get in to any of the computers or whatever it is because like we have like a program that we use for our pay stuff and they're supposed to send us at how we could access that as non-employees after november 1st so i'm just like in this weird limbo for the next two weeks and i'm like slowly i guess looking into to see how an old man in 2024 does a brand new resume <laughs> um and i want to you know publicly here um you know thank the people and i did privately of course whether it be texts or in the discord or whatever it was but anybody who reached out to me and a lot of people did just to see how I was doing, I really appreciate it. It's not, um, you know, not uh, without whatever. I'm still figuring stuff out, you know. Um, how about you, Adam? How's, how's things with you? Well, Joe, as a show of solidarity, um, <laughs> just because I didn't want you to feel left out, yes. I went ahead and quit my job two weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> Knowing that this was coming, <laughs> knowing that this was on, this was like in the in the works. Uh, I got the Iggy. Um, so like, I didn't want you to be out there on the job hunt by yourself. Oh, thank you. So if you need any, if you need any tips on how not to get called in for interviews, let me know. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, how I can help you polish up your resume. Uh, but I think this is just a, a sign that the Sposto verse needs to launch right now. No. <laughs> um, if you listen to the other shows, Brian, uh, Studebaker, he had jokingly said to me, he goes, now it's time for you to focus just on podcasting. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to need a lot more Patreon subscribers for that to happen. <laughs> and I said, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, we figure out what this damn ad rate is. That's our problem. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. the one hurdle that's keeping us from becoming financially stable is figuring and, out that oh, ad rate. <laughs> so um, related but unrelated. Uh, we're going to get to wrestling, I promise. Uh, I, I finally heard back after, you know, the discussions of it with both you and Todd privately and publicly, I finally heard back from the CLZ people. Okay. And you know what they wanted to know? Our ad rates. What our ad rates were. <laughs> Damn it. I need to know how to figure that out. I know. <laughs> <sighs> oh, well. Well, best of luck. Um, like I said, I, I don't know anybody that's hiring. If I did, I would be working there. But if you need any hints on how to work some of the job sites or whatever, you know, Indeed and LinkedIn, let me know. Uh, right. And, and I will say, um, you know, Brett was a lot of help. DJ was a lot of help kind of pointing me in the, those directions there. Not to just single the two of them out. But again, they were. Uh, Matt Fish helped me out a bunch. And then I'm actually... This Sunday, um, when I go to, um, you know, Sunday night dinner at my folks house, uh, my sister-in-law who works for like a big local bank, um, for many, many years and like did all their hiring and now, and again, not to dox her, but she then moved and she runs like all the hiring and financials for like another big local company. And I say big local company, right? Mm -hmm. So she's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll help you figure out how to make a resume. Or she's like, I'll help you polish it up. And I'm like, I go, you're, you're polishing up nothing because I got nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's just one of those things where um, I, 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 I've heard tale of people that got a much bigger severance than I did. Mm -hmm. um, and they squandered it. <laughs> and, and again, I know I'm not saying you, but and again, if you think I mean you, I don't mean you. Um, or I, I hear stories of people that like this is like how they just become like an unemployed bomb. And I, and I was also telling somebody 
Um, you know, obviously, because I worked a half day yesterday. Today was my first, like, you know, official, like, so it was my first official day not having to go to work, even though the job technically does not end until November 1st. But that being said, today is the first time that I have not had a job since 1991. Oh, wow. All right. That, like, as I was, like, you know, 91, 91 to 97, like, it was one of those things where, like, jobs were overlapping, right? Yeah, sure. Because I wasn't one of those people, like, you know, I don't know what a two-week notice is, right? And when you're washing dishes or working at McDonald's, there is no such thing as a two-week notice. Yeah, it's, you, uh, I won't be here tomorrow if they get that at all. <laughs> or you say, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, or you effectively just stop showing up. Yeah, but it was just one of those things where, like, I'm doing two dishwashing jobs at once, and now I'm doing one. I'm doing the dishwashing job in the McDonald's. Now I'm just doing the McDonald's. I'm doing McDonald's, and I'm working at the J.C. Penny Call Center. Now I'm just working at the J.C. Penny Call Center. I'm doing the J.C. Penny Call Center and the super secret science job, and then now I'm just doing the super secret science job, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> But and that's the other thing is like I'm not above pushing a broom, you know. If I can't find something immediately, you know, it's the holidays. People are hiring, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck, sir. I'm sure you'll land on your feet. I have a I have a feeling you'll have a new job before I will. <laughs> well, l- let's hope um, I could get my foot in the door and I could bring you with me. Maybe there we go. I'll be <laughs> your assistant. Oh yes. <laughs> That Vansky is a piece of shit, but that Adam Van Volkenberg guy, he's a good worker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I did see a job opening at a, a, a baseball card uh, thing. This week. <laughs> put my- I'm, I'm surprised the guy had time to post it. He was, I, I assumed he was busy doing lines of Spectrox all day. <laughs> I'm going to be over in that neck of the woods tomorrow. I'm going to stop in to see if I could see how the uh, sausage is made, you know? There you go. <laughs> all right, on to the show. All right. So that's my job situation. Who knows what the world will bring? Um, even my brother, um, you know, who's in the pipe fitters union. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously when you're in the union, your joblessness works a lot differently. Right. But he's like the first time that it happened to me, like I was going out of my mind. He goes, I can only imagine how you're doing. And it's just, and uh, <laughs> the, the show is therapy. So um, it's one of those things where I'm constantly doing attempting to do something even if mm-hmm. it's small menial tasks around the house right. um, so that i'm not left alone with my thoughts for any period oh. of time. you mean my worst nightmare alone yes. with my thoughts yes uh, i have a comic collection you could sort if you want no 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 you could he you could he could come over to your house pick it up mm-hmm. bring right. it down here and go from there there you go there you go but I, I ain't I ain't going picking nothing up. It's got to be brought to me. I got you. Well, that's what happened to me. So it was delivered to my back door. So <laughs> <laughs> quietly in the, in the in the darkness of night. So <sighs> a lot more innuendo to start this podcast off than I would have liked. But here well, we are, right? Right. Well, that's our show, anyways. So. That, oh, it definitely is our show. Oh, and this is another thing that I could just mention here, real quick. Mm-hmm. And then we're gonna get into you and your. New York Comic Con adventures, but not all of them. Right. Stuff that's non show specific. So it's stuff that we don't already have in the script for the main show. (laughs) Right. And come over here. Yep. Um, so you know, we were talking um about putting together a resume and how it's been twenty four years since I've had to do that, you know, and I've only Mm -hmm. had to do it like two or three times in my entire life. And as I am, and again, I'll, I'm not going to say fighting with a wet brain person on social media this past Sunday. Oh, boy. But having a discussion with a wet brained individual on social media this past Sunday, right? Extra wet, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing that you could ask for. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway. Um, follow me on social media get some of these jokes I don't know right. so um, as I'm going back and forth with this person I'm not saying anything untoward I'm not insulting him but I'm having a very passionate discussion in regards to the intricities in regards to professional wrestling mm-hmm. and I thought and it was at that moment Sunday afternoon as I'm doing this it dawned on me my new employer could find this information right you know, it's not like when you 
Google me, mm-hmm. the first two things that come up are cagematch.net, which is a wrestling database thing of all the things that I've done commentary on, including all of my aliases. Oh, boy. Which is just what an employer is looking for, an an employee that has aliases. Right. The other thing that comes up is my IMDB page. Oh, boy. Which also lists all the wrestling events that I've done since 2005, plus all of my aliases, plus, 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 plus. So I'm like, yeah, I don't like... I don't know how I approach something like this, you know? Um, So, yeah, again, high potential employers. (laughs) Right. I'm sure they're listening, so. (laughs) They could be. I'll be on my best behavior, Joe. Oh, my goodness. I was thinking about locking my social media. Um, I was thinking about, like, putting things behind a paywall until I got a new job. But I was just like, fuck it. Right. Let the chips fall as they may. Right, at least they can't find your old Twitter. That's true. Well, you know, like the the long standing one, you don't have to delete that one. Twitter did it for you. Well, if you, I, I see. No, don't tell let's, me how we. Let's can just find say, it. thankfully, right. no, they can't. <laughs> okay, right. So, Todd, how was your four day adventure in the big scary New York City? It was. You know what? It was delightful. Mm-hmm. Um, I went in with uh, the definitive Colonel Sanders artist, uh, Tom Durenick. Josh uh, showed up a day later. He couldn't show up because he had uh, the kids that day and was was waiting. So And then Friday he had to get them off to school in the morning. So he showed up about halfway through the day. Uh, um, halfway through on Friday. Friday, yes. Okay. Halfway through Friday. So, uh, basically just to get Tom's stuff out of the way, stuff that he doesn't, he, I talked to him, he doesn't mind me saying he ended up being in the black on the first day, early on the first day. So he was happy with, with the money he made. And then, um, along the way, he got some editors from different, uh, comic companies who offered him work as of today, which was only a couple of days after he got back. So all in all for him, it was a really good show. You know what I mean? So, which is really what it's all about. Um, like me going, like whatever happens for me, who cares? Uh, I just hope that he can network, do better. You know what I mean? Whatever. So, and I'm there to help him. So that was, that was a, a good thing. But for me, you know, I got to sit at the table when I wanted. I got to walk around when I wanted, other than him having to use the bathroom or talk to an editor or two. I was able to do whatever I want, whenever I wanted, but I didn't want to do a lot. I did more for other people. I got a gift for a friend for another friend. Um, mm-hmm. You saw what that one was, but I, I didn't did. want to mention that on here. Um, I got stuff for you. I got stuff for other people. I managed to get some stuff for myself, but you know, uh, it, it was the show itself w- w- was good. W- was a lot of fun. Um, the one thing that I did like was they gave. Tom, this year food voucher, so we got to got to buy food on the show floor without using our own money or drinks or whatever. So they gave him about fifty dollars in food vouchers, so that we got to split a soda with that on the, oh. show, on the show floor and, and all the uh, free coffee you could drink. Right? No, I found out that that was a scam. Um, no, what? it was a scam. They had they had a booth over on the side that was selling. Uh, flick snacks and and coffee and stuff, but they put the coffee out where you could see it, and everybody ran for it with their cups in their hands. And then the lady was guarding it with her life, going, "No, you got to go over there and purchase the coffee, and then you can come over here and get it." And I was like, "Ah, I'm good." Have, I'm good. have you? I doubt it. Have you ever seen the Mister Show uh, movie Run, Ronnie, Run? No, I haven't. All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a statement. You're going to write this down. We're going right. to talk about it later. Okay, I'm writing I'm it down gonna, now. I'm going to say, just write down Run, Ronnie, Run, because I'm going to ask Todd, is this the line to get the coffee? Or is this the line to get the cups to get the coffee? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. But, yeah, so there was that. But uh, now I know we're not the weather show, but I will say this. The weather was amazing all four days, which made yes. me very, very happy. It was the first three days was like cold in the morning and cold at night when we were leaving ish. And when I say cold, I'm talking like 50 degrees, like chill in the air, chill in the air, because we would get in the con 
you know, it, like around 10 o'clock. So you were getting ready, like leaving the hotel in the morning and it was like chilly. And then we were leaving the con at like eight o'clock or later. So the sun's already gone down. So it's chilly again. But then the last day, Saturday was in the seventies. So I didn't even take my hoodie with me. I just like, was like, I like uh, bared it out in the morning. And then I'm glad I did because it got really warm in the afternoon, but I was never hot at the con or overheated. So uh, that was good. I'm huh. with New- with New York weather. As long as it's not raining or snowing, I'm good. I've never had a bad, like, there's been times when I've gone to New York and it's rained. There's times when I've gone to New York when it's snowed. If it's not raining, it's not snowing. It's always the perfect temperature. Right. Um, so the first night that we were there, uh, the first day, obviously we get in early and I was able to get a bagel at Liberty bagel. Right. Um, and I'll just crack that out here. Obviously anybody who watched me on Twitter, I got my bagel every morning. Um, various ones, different ones. I have now my just, I just have my pattern. There will be no changes here on out. Um, because I found the cream cheeses I like, and I like the bagel that I like. And, uh, whether it's an egg or an egg, everything, I was like, fine with that. And then Sunday morning, I was like final, uh, bagel of the weekend question mark. Um, and I didn't put it in the, in the, on Twitter because I wanted to save it for here. When I went, when I left the show for reasons that I'll get to later, um, I went to the bagel shop again because when I was there, they had pizza bagels mm. and when you buy it, it's $8 for the pizza bagel, but you get both halves. You know what I mean? Yes. And you get cheese and sauce and like say seven ninety five or $7 for a plain, a dollar extra for pepperoni. I went for the, you know, the Cadillac of, uh, meats. I went for the pepperoni <laughs> and, uh, I got it. It was delicious. I ate it there. It was piping hot. I got a soda. I was like, this is so good. I have a picture I'll drop in the Discord later of that one. Um, But that was my meals every morning. The first night we were there, because Tom had an artist alley pass and a profession professionals pass, they were having a talk about like furthering the, 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 the industry and comic creators and stuff in the Javits and they were serving food. So we're like free food. We're in, you know, (laughs) paid X amount of money for the table. We found where it was and they had two or three stations of food. And I'll tell you what they're in a minute. And then drinks you had to buy. It was either a $5 soda or mixed drinks. We weren't drinking. We, we, we just bought drinks, but they had Nathan hot dogs for free with all the, the fixings, whatever you want. And then they had like some Korean, buns they were called but that well it's not like a bun it's like a the best way to describe it was it was a uh, a korean taco it had like a soft shell pita shell around it i don't know what it was and then i don't even know what it is that i ate that was in it i think it was some kind of fish maybe du- no duck i'm sorry it was duck but i'm not 100 sure of that so i grabbed two of those ate those those were delicious when i came back for more they had ran out because we got there late. And once the food ran out at any station, they wheeled them off the station. You know what I mean? They didn't refill them. They were just right. Gone. It's done. We're not giving you any more. So I don't know what the other station was. Cause I went to the hot dog station and the nice lady was like, I'm like, can I have a hot dog? Nathan's hot dog. She's like, yes. Do you want two? And that's when I realized she's trying to get rid of them so she can wheel her station away. And I was like, no, I'm good. I'll just have one. If I want to come back for more, I'll, I'll have another one. She goes, well, I could put two hot dogs in one bun if you want. <laughs> no, I'll just have one hot dog right now. So I went back and I got another hot dog. And I ended up putting like sauerkraut on this one and onions on that one. So I was really good tummy wise later that night. But I came back and I was like, oh, uh, can I get two more hot dogs? She's like, well, I'll make them both a double for you. I was like, <laughs> Oh my God, because she's trying to get rid of them. You know what I mean? Oh, so I ate them. Goodness. I had the soda. And we and then the, they're like t- five minutes to the keynote, the first keynote speaker. And Tom was like, oh, time to hit the old dusty trail. <laughs> so, um, But Jason Aaron at one point and Scott Snyder were going to talk, but they were going to be at the end of the night, which would have been like 10 o'clock. Yeah. And we're like, no, we're leaving. I, I want to hear what they have to say. But uh, so we left. And then on the way back to the bus, we stopped in White Castle for a White Castle. Oh, did you get me my clamorings? I did, and they burnt them, and I threw them away. Sons of bitches! 
and and when I asked when I asked for cocktail sauce, they said they don't carry that anymore. The but fuck? they had a sign. They had a sign that I could I could send you that said like the clam strips are back. All right, are back. So they went away, but they didn't bring back the cocktail sauce apparently. But I had two or three of them, and then I threw them in the garbage because I was not going to die over them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Burnt like seafood is just. If that's going to leave a mark, you know, yeah, just, if I could, if I could just interject real quick here, I have my own food story. Uh, so, you know, in the time that I had off, well, actually it started when I went to go up to uh, DJ's soon to be named network North for uh, the AEW pay-per-view two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whenever it was right. I'm leaving aces uh, birthday party two weeks ago, leaving aces birthday party. I stop at Dunkin Donuts and they have a thing there called a Dunk a latte, right? Yep. Signage. It's on the video board. It's the whole thing, right? And it's two weeks ago, the 12th. And it's like, oh, it's just like a, a, a what you want to call it? It's just like a cappuccino, but it's like a creamy milkshake. And I'm like, this sounds delightful. And it was. So I got one, right? Right. So then uh, this past Wednesday, maybe Thursday, mm-hmm. whatever day it was. I go, I'm going to go run some errands, but I'm also going to go out and I'm going to hopefully find the Dunkin' Donuts pumpkin. Right, mm-hmm. uh, the, the the pumpkin bucket, the, the the with the munchkins in it. Right now, don't right. get me started on Dunkin' Donuts that are out of donuts at four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, right. Let's not get started on that. But I go to the Dunkin' Donuts by me, and I go in, and I'm like, "Oh, do you have the bucket?" No, we sold out. And she's like, "If you come back tomorrow morning, we might have more." Which is like weird that it seems like. They're being rationed to Dunkin' Donuts stores, or at least this one, that we're going to send you X, but you can only sell 10 a day or whatever it is, right? The way that she worded it. Right. And they want to make them last. They don't want to yeah, have them all I, sold out in day one. I guess. And then I go, could I get a Dunk a Latte? And she goes, oh, no, we don't have that anymore. Ugh. And I point behind her as the video for it is playing on the goddamn screen, thing, the screen. I go, then somebody needs to take that off so you don't have people like me coming in here and ask, can you guts for a thing that's no longer on the menu when it's literally on the menu, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then Sunday before we go up to my dad's house, we had to stop by. April's like, I'm sleepy. I need to get a coffee. Go to the Dunkin' Donuts by him. She gets her coffee. They have the signage up for the Dunkin' Latte. Uh Uh-oh. Can I get a Dunkin' Latte? Yes. Cool. Let's go, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the one where they had the bucket, but they were out of munchkins. They had zero munchkins. And I go to the window, and the girl's like, oh, here's the pail. Here's your thing. And she goes, oh, she goes, I'm so sad that we're out of munchkins. She goes, the new one for Halloween is so good. And she's describing it to me. And I'm like, you're not doing a good job of telling me about the food that you don't have. <laughs> right. <laughs> so then, uh, Monday... I had to go run over to Lowe's doing like some small like repair stuff around the house. Dunkin' Donuts by the Lowe's. I'm going to swing by. They have the signage out of the drive through the video wall. Dunk a latte. Can I get a dunk a latte? Nope. We don't carry that anymore. Well, okay. You might wanna, want to want me tear that sign down for you. Well, that's the thing. It's not. It's not like because everything's like the no. video screen. No, right? I know it's video, but I would have torn yeah. the video sign down. So, so I go to the window to the lady. I go, hey, just so you know, I go, I'm cool with what I got. I go, but I know you guys are out of the Dunkin' Lattes, but the video on the menu on the drive through is still playing. Get the Dunkin' Latte. So you might want to take that off, so you don't have people like me coming asking for an item. That you don't have, but you're very clearly advertising, and they're not gonna like. And again, and they're not gonna. Some people may not be as kind and as jovial about it as I am, because mm-hmm. coffee's coffee. At the end of the day, when you're a coffee drinker, just give me some goddamn coffee. But if I can get a coffee that tastes like a milkshake, I'll take that first. If you don't right. have it, just give me a coffee that tastes like a coffee. That being said, I'm glad you <laughs> dropped your bucket in the Discord. Yes. Because as I was going to get my pizza bagels and I was on my at my adventure to get something else after that, I walked past the Dunkin' 
and I was going to go in and see if they had them in New York because people were carrying them around New York Comic Con, handing out like like uh, like creators giving other creators like because I recognize who it was giving yeah. like oh we got the 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 bucket do you want to like some Munchkins kind of a deal so I was like oh they have the pumpkins around here I'm going to contact Joe and see if he wants me to grab one it's not like you know I'm leaving today in about yeah. an hour I'll just bring it home you know. And I look, and I just got. The, I look in the Discord, and I'm like, "Oh, he got the pumpkin. I don't have to ask him. We're good." So now, if anyone uh, in our listener base is near a Tim Hortons, uh, their bucket not only has a, a, an actual lid on it, but it also glows in the dark. So, oh. um, if you could find one of those for me, the only yep. Tim, the only Tim Horton near us is you know those Onovo rest plazas that opened up around us recently. Yes. There's one, actually, it's um, off 84, traveling up toward where you go to your pig roast. Mm -hmm. If you go keep going, there's a Burger King Tim Hortons uh, rest area off that 84, but I'm not going to drive 32 miles on a maybe for a glow-in-the-dark pumpkin bucket. I'd do it for you, Joe. Well, you live closer, so. Right, but, so. If you happen to be going there. In your travels. Right. Um, now, don't get me started. The, the fact that there's Tim Hortons in the United States to begin with mm-hmm. is supposed to just be in Minnesota. But anyway. Right. Back to New York. So so now that was the first night that we ate. The second night, which would be Friday, Josh was in. So we went to that pizza place that we love, John's yep. of Times Square. We got two of the, the Hawaiian pizzas, which was almost not enough. But I always wanted to get pasta there, but we always get pizza. It's like, this pizza is so good, we don't get anything else. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to, usually we get an appetizer, a garlic bread, something, stuffed mozzarella, whatever. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get penne and we'll just get three plates and share it. Like, because they give you a, a decent size, you know portion that i always see going around the, the the restaurant and we order it and now we ordered penne with marinara i don't have the menu in front of me but we get it and we start eating and our lips are burning off joe just burning off right okay and i end up looking on the menu there's a sauce whatever like let's just say it's argumenta do you know what i mean like that's kind of what it sounds like that's what the guy heard, and it's their spicy marinara with the hottest, like, hot stuff in it. And I was like, I'm not even arguing. I'm just like, whatever, it, you know, it, when we got the receipt, that's what it said on it, uh, whatever. But we ate the the pineapple and uh, ham pizza, and it immediately sucked all the heat out of our lips. So I thought mm. that was good. Get um, the fuck out of here with spicy marinara. Exactly. Fuck. I was the same way. Uh, so next time we go, I have to try it again and hope I get the regular. Um, but that was amazing. Love, love all that. So the third night we left New York city and we ate at a diner kind of thing in this, um, just like a plaza. So they had like other food, like they had a Chili's in there okay, and they had a hula hands in there, but they also had, I forget the name of it, diner, whatever, like, but it was a really nice looking diner. And I ended up getting their smoked Turkey sandwich. And it was one of the best smoked Turkey sandwiches I ever had. Um, it comes with every like sandwich or hamburger or whatever thing comes with a salad on the plate with their own, uh, house dressing, which is like a vinaigrette. <sighs> the best way to describe it is like a vinaigrette dressing mixed with a hint of barbecue sauce. Okay. But it was really good. Really good. But uh, I forgot to ask them not to put the tomatoes on it. But I don't care. I'm coming around on tomatoes. But the tomatoes made the really great toasted bread kind of soggy. But uh. it was the best uh, uh, turkey that I've had in a long, long time. So... Uh, we ended up the manager, the owner came out and asked how it was. We said, this is really good. You're going into our New York Comic Con eating rotation. And he was very happy about that. He's like, so see you next year. Um, cool. So that was good. So that was our, our third night. And then our fourth night coming home, we always stop at a friendlies on the way home in East Stroudsburg. But I know the one. Got, I very specifically know that one. Yes. Right. Well, you don't know it anymore. It's a T-Mobile. 
Oh, right. So we were very unhappy, but I did a quick Google search and there's one in Tannersville near the, the crossings. Yes. So, which is only like a few miles up the road. We went there and that was great. We had one of the, we had one of the best waitresses we've ever had. We got our meals. Josh and Tom got some kind of quesadillas. I forget what it was like smoked hickory, whatever. I wasn't for that, but they had their limited edition, uh, like, like, uh, fall menu which is thanksgiving kind of theme and they had the harvest stack which was just a thanks like a turkey meal with dress uh with the yeah stuffing gravy mashed potatoes and cranberry sauce just all piled and it was so good i was like this is the best i'm glad you gave me the little pamphlet that had the the special stuff on it she said oh i'm glad you liked it i said just so i know the 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 harvest stacks are bottomless refills right and she laughed i was like no (laughs) She's like, no. So we were like, good. But Josh asked for his, because his uh, quesadilla came with French fries. He's like, uh, I want, and I want all the French fries that can fit on a plate. And she's like, okay. And she, t- I, like, with no extra charge on the, on the, the bill when we got it, his qu- quesadilla was just covered in French fries. <laughs> like, the whole plate. They yeah. gave him, like, four orders. And we were like, she was good. She was coming with the soda. She was taking care of us. We got appetizers. She brought the appetizer on time. When we left, Tom was like, I had a really good week. We gave her a ridiculous tip to the point like we could watch her counting it. And she thought something was wrong. (laughs) And then she like realized like it was, it was like over a 30% tip. Okay. Joe. Yeah. So, but she was really nice. And we like, we liked her. And I was tempted because it was so big of a tip to go outside and then come running back in and go, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, ma'am. We've made a terrible mistake. And she's going to be, oh, they, they fucking over tipped me. And I was going to give her like the, the last $4 I had in my pocket and leave. <laughs> but I didn't. She was just, she was like, oh, come back anytime. We're like, see you next year. Um, and then I got home and I was, I was destroyed, but I ended up emptying up all my bags and stuff like that. And, got my started my laundry and crashed but that was that was kind of the trip uh not on the floor which we talk about on the main show right so, right but. now there's one more food purchase that you neglected to mention todd oh does that did i and it's the food purchase that was robbed of me uh this past week where we went to uh hershey this past weekend for uh, the hollow their Halloween horror nights things. That's not what it's called, but that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously they're trying to step up their game to compete with your Universals and your Dony Parks and your stuff like that for it. And they did a very good job of it, but it was very busy. Mm-hmm. We got in one of the lines to get on one of the things, and like we waited in the line for like a half hour and like you they rush you through like six minutes at most mm-hmm. of the, like the haunted house thing that they have but like once we got out of that one all of the other ride waits were minimally 90 minutes to get through right right so i go okay saving grace park closes at 10 because it's horror nights we're gonna start wrapping things up at nine o'clock head back to chocolate world April's going to get her candy, which is the Hershey bars that have uh, waffle cone pieces in them. Mm -hmm. Ace is going to get his, which is two economy size bags of take fives. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go and I'm going to get my stuff your cup, giant Reese's peanut butter cup. Right. Everything's open till 10. We're good, right? Yep. How'd that go? It didn't go well. The uh, Reese's stuff your cup thing was closed well before we got there. Like, when we got there, it wasn't like, oh, we're wrapping up, sorry. It was like things had been closed for a while when I showed up. I was bummed. I wasn't having a great week to begin with. I'm not going to say, like, listen, I just went and ate more barbecue the next day. You know, the the food evens out. I don't know the next time that we're going to get a chance to go to Hershey, but at least now that the weather is chillier... We could get there, I could get it first, and just go put it in the car and be done with it and not have to worry about it. Right, right. But Todd, at my behest and behooving, he went, because there's a Hershey store in New York City, Times Square, that does the same thing. So take me through your stuff your cup journey. Right, so like I said... It was about four o'clock at the con. So I left maybe a little early. I left three 30 ish. I told the, the, the guys 
I'm going to leave you, Tom, Tom want, want cleaned up and threw his stuff on the, the table and packed it up in a bag in his bag, his roll along bag. And he told Josh to watch it. He's going to go walk the floor because he hasn't walked the floor the whole weekend. Going to buy gifts for his kids and his wife. I'm like, that's fine. That gives me time. I'll walk up. I'll get my pizza bagel. And I'll go to the Hershey store. And since the Hershey store is super close to Port Authority, it shouldn't take me long. I'll be coming back as you guys are leaving. On that, I won't even, you know, spoiler. It it all worked out that we pretty much ended up at Port Authority at the same time. So I walk up. And I get to the to the Hershey store and uh, I walk in and it's very small. I was shocked about how small it was on Times Square. And if I had known your wife wanted waffle pieces, whatever, I would have grabbed a few of those too. Ah, uh, we got we we ended up getting it. There. She didn't want to buy a thirty six count box of them. Right. She just wanted like ten of them. So we right, which I would have done. Whatever. Well, we were at but, Hershey. We we were at Hershey on Saturday. We already got them. But thank you. Okay. No. Um. So I went in and I didn't know how to do the 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 like you explained it, but I went up to the thing and I was like, "Oh, can I do this?" She's like, "Yeah." And there was somebody in front of me getting it done, and I ended up ordering. And they, you know, obviously I got the the, the thing, and they're like, "Well, you get four ingredients and two toppings, or whatever you would call it." So. I didn't know, and if I had known that you could double up or quadruple up on toppings, mm-hmm. like I could have got four of one if I wanted, or two yeah. of two. Didn't know that, but so I went for these toppings. I got the pretzel bits, or the, right. yeah, the ingredients. I got the pretzel bits. I got the Reese's cups chopped up. I got the mini Reese's pieces and chocolate chips as my That's, four. I got That's I what, got no complaints with that uh, that selection. Now, if I had known, I might have doubled up on the pretzel bits and not got the Reese's Pieces, the mini Reese's Pieces, or I might have done double pretzel bits and double chopped Reese's Cups, whatever. I don't know. But that's what I got. And then for the toppings, I went for the chocolate syrup and the peanut butter sauce instead of the caramel or the marshmallow. These, These are all correct choices so far. Right. So I got it. It was done. And uh, obviously you said yours cost you t- like the base price is twenty five dollars. Yeah, 25 bucks, whatever. Yeah. Right. So mine is twenty four ninety five. And then there's a five cents New York City bag fee. So <laughs> that rounds it out to twenty five, which is that fancy colored uh, Reese's peanut butter or uh, Reese's Hershey's bag that they give you to carry it in. Not the cardboard container that they give you with the handle. The bag was a knickel, but I don't know if there's a bag fee when you get it in Hershey or if it's just twenty five dollars straight. Um, and then the <laughs> I, I think that's I think the person who charged you for the bag fee is the, is the same person as the wallet inspector. <laughs> okay. Um, so then there's an 8.8, 8, uh, 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 an 8% tax on it. So mine's a little more cause I did the math with the 6%. Um, but that's what it was. And then I brought it home. I didn't even like, cause the guy's like who made it, uh, he's like, Oh, here's your spoons or whatever if you want. And I'm like, no, I'm taking this home. This is like, I'm going back home. Uh, there's, I'm not eating it here. So I'll, when I get it out of the house, it's fine. He's like, Oh, Okay. So I took it on the bus, and then we had it in the car, and we had the air on in the car because it was warm, so it was all good. I brought it home. I was like, oh, it's Sunday night, football's on. I'm going to have me a little little dessert, so I cracked it open, and I started eating. I'm like, this is good. It's not the most amazing thing in the world because it's just a big Reese's peanut butter cup. Yeah. But it, but it was so sugary that it immediately started affecting me. Like, I was like, oh, man. Like, I – like – just because sugar screws me up. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. So yep. I had like, I had a cup, I had a couple of big spoonfuls. I was like, ah, this is really good. I, like I said, I wish I went double pretzels and not the Reese's pieces because I don't think they work as well in it. And I was like, oh, this is good. But I laid down. And I was like, oh, I feel, I feel overwhelmed by the sugar. Maybe tomorrow on Monday night football, I'll feel better. I'll be, <laughs> I'll eat some more. And I ate some more Monday night and I'm like, I have to have my blood tested in like a month for like how much sugar I've eaten. I've had enough. It was good for the bit. I bought it. I tried it. I did like it, but I brought it to the shop. You were there and I was like, you can have it. He's like, no, I was like, you or Becky can have it. Cause yep. the, 
you you didn't get yours and it's not like i was eating out of it with my hand you know what i mean like right. i was using the spoon and you were like give it to becky i was like you sure because i know you didn't get one and he's like no and i gave it to her and she thanked me and she took it home so i don't know if she's had any of it yet but uh it was good but i that's not a one man th- thing for me like in the huh? old days maybe oh. but now i can't so it it's not a one day thing for me right but it's definitely a one man thing for me right well even i think i had if i was going at the rate i was going not counting the chocolate because i wasn't eating the chocolate i was just mm. eating the innards so that was your mistake oh okay um i think i had three more days in me maybe four with the, with all the chocolate. Yeah. And that would have been too much. Like that's, that's just me really doing bad things to my body <laughs> that, uh, I shouldn't be doing. So hopefully she enjoys it, you know, but, uh, I don't think I'll ever be getting one again unless it was to share with somebody, you know, coward. Hey, listen, I have, no, listen, you have met, you have medical reasons that you should not be eating that thing. No, but and then I ate the healthy bagel, so that's that. Right. That goes that goes good. But, it's bread, you know. It's yeah, healthy. but that that was all around. That was all around good, you know. Like I said, no bad stuff. No almost fist fights on the show floor. I swear. <laughs> well, thank you very much for sharing all of the food stuff from New York, which is just as important as the comic book stuff, and that's what After Dark is, of course. Real life, off topic mm. banter. Yep. You know, love banter. Love yes, banter. Yes, I love banter as well. So, uh, banter is so <laughs> the uh, leaning into banter, and we'll plug and we'll wrap this up and all that sort of jazz. It's an extra long episode because we have the uh, my work discussion in there as right, well to, to drop in, if you will. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so, one of the shows, one of the Dabbleverse shows that I listen to, right? Of course. They lean into the banter on purpose at the beginning right mm-hmm. and they say we're only we're the only show that does banter and like <laughs> oh, do a little bit on it mm-hmm. and they've had people send in um like theme songs for the for the banter segment mm-hmm. do you know the metallica song blackened no um i'm not gonna sing it but if you know the metallica song blackened listener it's they have that and it's uh, now, I'm not going to sing it because I don't want us to get popped on YouTube. Um, I'm going to just re- recite the words. Words? Now, to recap the events of the day, banter is the way. We recap the events of the day. Color our world banter. Banter. <laughs> so, if you know the, so... They have banter theme songs. I'm not saying that we need banter theme songs. I'm just saying uh, they're the reason that, like, when Marcus mentioned, like, er, banter, it was right around the time that banter was, like, really becoming a thing on uh, who are these socials. So I'm like, I'm going to, like, double down and lean into it and everything else like that. We got a plug for the shows on Cardiff's private stream on his secret YouTube channel yesterday. I don't know what that's going to be. We did? Yes. We- Oh my God! A potato said my podcast was worth listening to. Absolutely. Oh boy! You know what? I might I might be coming around on Cardiff if we can get our numbers up. That's all. Um, and when I, when I looked at it, I'm like, oh, he mentioned it, so let me push this and so on and so forth. And it was because it was when you were gone to New York last year. We needed something for After Dark, and that's when I had interviewed Cardiff. And it's like almost a year to the day that we released the Cardiff episode that you were gone to New York last week. You mean the when the Cardiff episode escaped? Yes, escaped. Right. It was released. Yes. Well, year. It seems like a year ago. A lot of things were starting on the the <laughs> the, the network. So, <laughs> oh goodness. And hey, uh, patreoncom slash heroes, Go sign up. Give us money for extra content or early content. Uh, the full scans of the previous catalogs, comic book oddities, bonus show, proving the past, bonus show. This show. Um, you know, two days early, so you can listen to everything in the uh, correct listening order. And because you know, Todd came back from New York, I had a week. You need a lot of content this week from us, so hopefully yeah, you we, enjoy. Yep. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for your continued support, and uh, we'll see you all here next week. 
You're listening to the soon-to-be-named network, the Lamborghini of Podcast Networks.